Thank you for turning to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at an old favorite of mine, GW2, Gamma World Module Number 2, Famine in Fargo. This module, in my opinion, is where the wild and woolly aspect of Gamma World really came out. <clears throat> and you see the nice back. Chicken McNuggets, it tastes like chicken. Any chicken joke you want to make, you can make while you're playing this adventure. We played the heck out of this thing. I ran this module a bunch of times. Uh, and in fact, this is probably going to be the next adventure I run for my current Gamma World group. Uh, Craig would be the only one that's actually been through this adventure, and that was 35 years ago, so he'll remember it. So today on page 121, Gamma World, Famine in Fargo. Famine in Fargo by Michael Price. This was the second Gamma World module we got, and the only other support material we got for first edition Gamma World. In this module, it already talks about how they're going to be doing a new edition of Gamma World. So inside, we'll take a look at the inside gatefold first. Here's the player's map of the area. We are at Fargo, uh, it's along the Great Road right up here, and not too far from the meeting place where the 94, the 10, and the Great Ode, instead of Great Road, meet. And then we're going to come down to the Forest of Knowledge and all kinds of good places. Uh, this was meant to be a bit of a sandbox. It's not as well developed as Legion of Gold was. Uh, <clears throat> here we go. These are the inside, the chicken factory complex map, the building itself. We have a crash meteor in the area, all kinds of stuff. As I said, this was supposed to be a uh, sandbox adventure. We didn't really end up using the sandbox that much. We ended up uh, staying with the Legion of Gold and the area right off Mitch of Gloom. I, as a GM for this game found that having Lake Michigloom right there in my backyard was a lot more convenient for uh, stories involving the lake itself and monsters that came from it, stuff like that. So here we go. Uh, interestingly, it says for beginning and intermediate level players. This referring to the players themselves and their skill because Gamma World still has no levels for player character classes. Well, it doesn't have player character classes. You just set up and you go. So here's our setup, our background. Fargo is the town that you're, uh, you've grown up in. It's an agricultural community, about 1,200 residents, 25% pure strain human, 75% humanoids. Interesting, low, no mutated animals. And you are going to undergo the ritual of adulthood, and uh, you're going to go to the forest of knowledge and become adults. And once you get through the rite of adulthood, you're going to have to go find a way to solve the problem right now, which Fargo is having. And that problem is famine. Uh, some mysterious thing has been rotting out the crops and, and making the livestock die. And right now, famine is a big, big problem for Fargo. Uh, this is due, we find out later, to a crashed meteor in the area. Meteorite. Uh, so the, all this is to be read to the players. This is a lot of exposition. A lot of this module worries about the uh, right of adulthood the player characters are going through. Never been one of my favorite ways to start a Gamma World game. And a lot of the Gamma World official modules do start you out where you're undergoing some kind of rite or having just become an adult. I never really played it that way. I didn't use the ritual here. So off the players go to uh, become adults. And part of their particular adulthood uh, graduation is going to be to try to find a way to stop the famine in Fargo. So we get different encounters here. In uh, one of the places we encounter uh, the remains of an old book with the word, the title Gamma on a partially torn cover. And there's a small card that bears a hologram of a bearded man in pre-Holocaust clothing. Before the picture is the inscription, Executive Pass, E-G-G-P-R-E-S, President. This is Gary Gygax's pass it for this area i thought that was kind of funny they would use stick stuff like this in the old gamma world stuff all the time uh just little things from our world that you would find in this case we you find a copy of gamma world and you found e gary gygax's pass so kind of interesting uh we move through we have uh, the radiation rain which was an interesting encounter the idea of it raining and the radio the water being radioactive as it rains on you is pretty neat we do get a cryptic alliance encounter here with, the, of course, the ever-popular Knights of Genetic Purity. This particular group of knights is not that well-armed, or armored for that matter, 
Uh, and the player characters should be able to take them. The only real piece of old tech these guys are carrying is a needler, which has no knockout needles <clears throat> that you shoot into people. And uh, we have an encounter with a dying old man. Very D&D &D encounter in that one. And then we get to some berries, the berries that you're supposed to use as part of the ritual. And some of the berries are poisonous if the wrong ones, wrong people eat them. So the, uh, the black berries are poisonous, pure strain human and humanoids, but taste very sweet. And then how many berries you eat is the level of poison you have to deal with. In a gamma world, you basically get a save versus poison based on your constitution. So you can kill some player characters here. We get the red berries, they're bitter and they produce losses in the mental state of pure strain humanoids and pure strain humans and humanoids alike. This can also lower constitution scores of pure strain humans. So that's a pretty harsh penalty for just eating the wrong berries. I understand that the idea is that you have to be careful what you eat out in the wild, but the name of the module is Famine in Fargo. So you're kind of enticing players to eat the stuff, and then you're pun punishing them for them. I, I didn't kind of understand the logic there. And then we have the blueberries, the berries of truth for the humanoids. And they should be eaten by one of the humanoid characters, and this gives them a chance to have mental mutations and good things happen. Uh, <clears throat> It's kind of neat. Uh, pure strain humans gain a little bit of a bonus for it. Uh, they get uh, bonuses to attributes randomly determined. The berries can actually be a, a game slower. I did a modified version of the berry encounter uh, where I had the berries have temporary effects. I didn't kill anybody with them. I gave them temporary effects. A quick note on killing characters in Gamma World. Oh yes, all the time. Didn't matter how long the character had been around or anything like that. Uh, characters die in Gamma World, period. Gamma World is an incredibly dangerous area, and uh, death comes quickly and usually at the pointy end of an ancient piece of tech. Next, we come to the Batter Warrens. The player characters uh, come into a place, they find a bunch of batters that worship apparently Bucky the Batter. I'm not really sure, but Bucky the Badger, rather. I'm not really sure who Bucky is. I'm sure it's something from Wisconsin. So if anybody knows, please let me know. I did a little research on it, and I couldn't find a ton. But uh, let me know. But this there's a whole layer here for batters. I actually did do the, the batter layer. The unfortunate thing is this feels just like a DD and d adventure. You're just going through, and you're finding younglings. You're finding treasure, weapons in store chamber, the chamber of the elites. So, again, 1982 for this publication. Uh, the idea that it feels like a DD and d dungeon crawl, well, yeah, that's what they did. So we come out of the, the batter complex. And I like batters, by the way. They're, they're a good bad guy monster. We come up to the Lapree Industries ch Automated Chicken fa Processing Factory. For some reason, not a single human has visited the factory in the past 81 years. The main computer, keep on doing what it's doing, continues to grow and then process the chickens. And process, of course, we mean turn them into patties. But recently, some radiation, again from that meteor that we talked about, uh, has uh, affected some of the chickens and turned them into mutants, one-eyed mutants. Here's a nice layout of the factory itself getting in. The factory's in pretty pristine condition, which is fairly rare for a Gamma World thing. Usually sections of it have fallen in. <clears throat> but the chickens, here's some younglings hatching. Uh, the chickens are the Gallus Gallus. Uh, the 513s are the big ones that we worry about. They have one eye and different mutations. Uh, now the jokes about chicken begin. Uh, at one point, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken was then called Kentucky Fried Chicken when we first played this, not KFC. And uh, there were a lot of Kentucky Fried Chicken jokes about Colonel Sanders, uh, about chicken patties, chicken fingers. Uh, it tastes like chicken. You name it, we did the jokes. And that was what was fun with this. This one was the first one, first Gamma World module, only being the second one. But it was the first one that really kind of felt like you were reaching for the wild and goofy. Gamma World absolutely lends itself to that. And uh, that was something we embraced very quickly. So here we go. We go to the chick chicken patty processing area. It goes into details, actually, of how the chickens are <clears throat> processed from the coop, lightly killed, and then uh, turned into chicken patties. And then we have the big... Nasty mutant Gallus Gallus to deal with. Uh, I love the artwork in this one. There's not a ton really, but I love the artwork. I love them all looking like pirates and just scary and it's just a lot of fun. 
This is just an, another dungeon crawl. This is uh, a starship crawl, if you will, uh, where the player characters are going through the complex and having to deal with the various mutated chickens that are attacking them. We actually come into a set area of the room, or an area of one of the break areas, that has a copy of Animal Farm by George Orwell on the table, and a magazine called Best of Dragon, Volume 53. So again, some in-jokes, some funny stuff from our time. That was constant throughout Gamma World. Uh, stuff that absolutely would not have survived all those years did survive, and here it is. It pops up in the uh, in the adventure. That was a lot of fun. I used to put in different things, and the cover here is famous for our adventurer here using a stop sign as a shield. That became kind of emblematic of Gamma World. Uh, why the ancients with their high tech were still using stop signs, I don't know, but hey, it's fun. So then we find out that the atomic reactor needs fuel, and the uh, computer uh, makes a deal with the player characters if they'll go get a fuel, which happens, of course, to be the meteor. And they bring chunks of the meteor back that can power the uh, reactor. The computer will make sure that the processed chicken patties fall into the player characters' hands. They say, sure. Part of the deal, the player characters have to get rid of the Gallus Gallus, the big mutated chickens, because they're on their mutated chickens are bent on taking over the entire processing factory. What their ultimate goal really is, we don't know. We just know they're evil, and they want to pretty much kill everything else. Uh, there's chicken feed here. It would take a lot of chicken feed to feed one of these chickens, so I'm kind of curious as to how they fed and things like that. Uh, it's brought out a little bit in here, but it's just kind of interesting. The main thing, this was a good adventure. I did run it. We had a lot of fun with it. Most of the chicken jokes, I love that picture. Most of the chicken jokes are what make this the fun adventure it could be. I found the crawl part of it through the batter community and then through the chicken factory to be a little dry. So I added in some other stuff around the batter area. I put in some mutated plants, areas the batters knew to stay away from. And then the chicken factory itself, I actually did a couple of other mutated versions of the, the Gallus Gallus. Uh, ones that had, uh, in one case, they pulled themselves along by their arms because they had no legs, uh, and but they shot radiation from their eyes and stuff like that, just to, to shake things up a little bit. Uh, this is a very solid module by Michael Price. It's, it's fun. Uh, I found it, as the second offering, I found that Legion of Gold was better. Uh, I found it more engaging. I found it more widespread. This is pretty narrow focus. You've got your little area where the player characters originate, and then you've got the chicken factory, and that's it for your sandbox. It's a pretty small sandbox. Uh, also, if anybody knows where the junction of 9410 and uh, the Great Road would be, uh, let me know. I, I tried to find something. I really couldn't find anything that satisfied me. Uh, obviously, I'm thinking it's probably around Fargo, North Dakota, but uh, I couldn't find anything definitive. <clears throat> One thing I love this module for is, of course, we got some new creatures. The, the albalope, which is kind of an albino uh, antelope. We got the bulo, which is mutated buffalo, uh, which has shape change, kinetic absorption. And I'll get into that in a moment. That's a really good power. And then we got, of course, the mutated chickens themselves. And then we've got the glowers, which is a type of fungi that lives near irradiated uh, water, and then the molly, the mutated moose. Mutated moose became a big part of my campaign for a while, and we even had uh, mutated Bullwinkle and his mutated uh, squirrel friend, Rocket J. Squirrel, wandering around for a bit, and the moose had a backpack. That was uh, a recurring team-up that popped up in my campaign for quite a while until the moose tried to fly at full speed with the jetpack Head first through a doorway, I said he had to roll me a 15 or greater. He rolled a 1. I ruled he went straight into the door alloy wall and splashed himself. The player loved it, thought it was hysterical. Rocket J. Squirrel was on his back but jumped off just before he realized, or just when he realized he was about to try to go through the doorway. And the moose didn't make it and the moose didn't survive. One of the better moments in Gamma World. Uh, <clears throat> next, we get the Tarn Zeb which is a mutated plant. And then we get some new robotic units, which is the companion unit, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the veterinary robot, which would be very necessary at a chicken factory. 
We got a couple of new artifact items. The infrared rifle. You can't see the beam. You can only feel it. A radiation detector, which is oddly enough still called a Geiger counter. And a radiation suit. Then we get some new, bot, new mutations. We get bodily control, which is, allows you to alter some of your basic uh, physical abilities. Kinetic absorption, as I talked about earlier, the buffalo has it. You can absorb 25 points of damage from blunt physical attacks, such as maces, clubs, striking fists, or ramming heads with another buffalo. Anything over the 25, you lose off of hit points. That's actually a very powerful uh, power. Anti-life leech. This came up in the last one. It's defined here. This came up in Legion of Gold, and then in Legion of Gold, it was just basically, it negated life leech. In this one, if somebody tries to life leech you, the anti-life leech actually tricks in, uh, kicks in, and you life leech them for six points. You don't roll, you just life, life leech them. If you recall from the last video, life leech is, you stand in a group of people, you activate your power. If there are 10 people around you, all 10 people lose one die six points of hit points. You gain them as healing or phantom hit points. If you have somebody with anti-life leech in that group, you don't leech them, but they leech you for an automatic six points. You get displacement, which is a limited form of teleport, and it's only used to bop you out of danger, up to 60 meters away. If the danger is greater than 60 meters, like, say, I don't know, exploding chicken factory, then uh, you can't help you because it's further than you can teleport away. Interesting power of limited use. We had a great moment where there was a player character in a boat, and uh, somebody swung at them with a sword by surprise. The displacement power took over, and they ended up in the water, uh, and had to shed a lot of their equipment to stay afloat, and that some of the equipment was old artifact tech and things like that. The player was not happy. Uh, we got a new plant and uh, vegetable, vegetable mutation of sleep gas. And then the most important thing out of this module, as far as I was concerned in 1982, pure strain human information, we get a bump up on pure strain humans. Prior to this, nobody really wanted to play pure strain humans. You didn't get any powers. You got no real benefits. You were the baseline humans. The thinking in D&D &D was that baseline humans were the bulk of them and people would play them anyway, and that held, but it didn't hold in Gamma World. Without the powers, the pure strain humans really just didn't stand a chance. Well, they recognized that, and here we have it. And then they're going to be, these are official changes, and they're going to be added to the campaign on the next edition of Gamma World, second edition, which comes out in 1983. I'm going to be taking a look at that in a little bit. The pure strain humans have adapted their environments so well that they actually have higher scores in intelligence, charisma, and constitution. You take four die six and you add them all together. Intelligence charisma scores go up to a max of 21, whatever you roll. Constitution scores may not go above 18. That doesn't seem like such a big deal in and of itself until you realize the human, uh, pure strain humans are going to be throwing eight siders for hit dice, for hit points rather, instead of six siders. That becomes a big, big deal. So now you have a guy who's likely to have eight, an 18 constitution throwing 18 die 8. An average in a die 8 is a 5. So that's 90 hit points for your pure strain, pure strain human to start the player character. That was a big, big difference. It was a big bump for pure strain humans. And we saw a lot more at the table starting with the re, uh, advent of this module. Uh, also, you got extra healing off of medikits for pure strain humans because the medikit basically worked better for your anatomy. So there were some nice uh, touches here that made pure strain humans absolutely worth playing. We got to look at the batter warren. That's the little dungeon crawl layout for crawling through the batters. And uh, then we're kind of out. We have a little bit more on the medical table where the stuff works a little bit better for you. Uh, the interesting thing in this module was, of course, the chickens. Uh, at the end of the module, I, I don't know if I touched on this or not, but once you've made friends with the artificial intelligence running the chicken factory and uh, you've taken care of the evil mutated chickens, uh, which is a great sentence to need in life, by the way, uh, you then are able to take the chicken patties home to Fargo and you set up an arrangement where the chicken patties will be processed for you and Fargo no longer has a famine. And in fact, the module even suggests that maybe the... Uh, group of people living in Fargo, all 1,200 want to kind of move down here by the chicken factory and defend it and keep it as their food source. And that is what happened in our campaign. They, the whole lot, the whole group ended up moving to the chicken factory. Some lived inside, some continued to farm around it, but they 
guarded it as their main food source. Again, we didn't stay in Fargo very long in my campaign. We ended up going back to the Legion of Gold. I adapted this campaign or this module to be in the area of the Legion of Gold in a later version that I ran, and it was a lot of fun. And I've pulled elements out of it. I love this picture of what looks like, for all the world, a mutated chicken shaking down a robot for some lunch money. I just think that's just a great picture. I love this cover. Uh, I love the stop sign that the young lady is carrying, uh, the mutated human, the mutated animal. I'm just, this says Gamma World to me. And like I said, this is kind of the one that gave us the Wahoo uh, element to Gamma World, although we had found that ourselves. We played Gamma World very wide open. Uh, of course, no alignments in Gamma World as there were in D&D. &D. Uh, but because we weren't playing for high stakes and it wasn't such a serious campaign as D&D, &D, the lack of alignments really wasn't a problem. The player characters, oddly enough, got along better when there weren't a lot of uh, permanent things at stake because Gamma World was our backup campaign. This was the second game I played after starting D&D, &D, and uh, I had a bunch of fun with it. And then shortly after Gamma World came in, then we uh, got introduced to Traveler, and I went to that. So that's all I've got to say about Famine and Fargo by Michael Price today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Please leave any comments or polite criticisms below. Any suggestions for future videos, I'd be interested. That's all I've got to say today on page 121. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.